that's why there's a European movement now too of community churches being planted. The same thing, trying to get out of that orthodox uh, or that um, uh, Catholic way of thinking, and you know this, you know we don't really have to go to church. We kind of born into it, and so there's a lot of there's a lot of mission. I mean, there's a lot of work that needs to be done, and we find that in our backyard, to be honest with you. Um, mm-hmm. But we we are a church about missions, and we believe that um, God's called us to do international missions. A lot of what you talk you talk about looking for a new place. Could you briefly you know, go, go through the process of how you search for where you might, you know, for planting a new church? You know what a lot of it is? And uh, a lot of it's God. Uh, I mean, that's a very easy answer. But what happens is somebody will come and, and to us, and they'll realize that we're a church planting church, and they'll, they'll get involved. And um, some people realize that we're a church planting church and they'll, they'll come to us to train with us. We have a training process about how we want to go through and train church planters. We don't believe in the, not that we don't believe, but we, we don't necessarily believe somebody has to be in the professional pastoral ship. If that were the case, I, would, I wouldn't be a church planter. Uh, meaning that um, you don't have to go through four years of seminary or four, you know, have a four year degree, seminary degree, things like that. Although those things are important and we want to get to that point. You don't necessarily have to have those to be a, be considered a church planter or be a pastor of a church. You just have to have meet the qualifications that you find in the in the uh, New Testament scripture, in Timothy and Titus. So basically, um, people come to us and they'll they'll want to go. Th- they'll be they feel like they're being called to an area or being called somewhere. And if they believe in um, in the same beliefs that we do, in the same constitution we do, and the same beliefs in church planting new churches and mission work and things like that then they can take on the name of Pillar Church and be wherever, whether it's Pillar Church King George or Pillar Church in Unionville or Pillar Church in D.C., whatever it may be. That's kind of how we're Pillar Church of Dumfries and Pillar Church of Locust Grove because uh, I help plant Pillar Church of Dumfries. I help write all this curriculum for them, their membership curriculum, their elders, how they lead the church curriculum, uh, all those things I help. I was part of the process of helping them write. So why would I not be in the process? Why would I want to redo all that again? planting a new church. And so it only made sense since I fell into, you know, since I believed in the same things that Pillar Church was doing, not to just be Pillar Church of Locust Grove. So we still sponsor new churches that aren't Pillar Church because they have a different model for how they want to plant churches, and that's fine, as long as it's gospel-centered and Bible, um, Bible-believing. Bible That's, that's our main thing. So, uh, But that's, that's kind of how we plant new churches. We'll, we'll also look at an area where there's not a lot of church activity, <coughs> and we usually... Uh, just like Quantico, uh, Quantico is a place, uh, I don't know if you're all familiar with this, but inside of Quantico, inside the base, there's a little town called Q-Town, it's Quantico Town, where about 600 people live. There's no church there, none, none, no gospel activity, no nothing. And if you've ever been in that place, it is dead, dead, <laughs> it, is, it is hard. It is very, it's a, it is a tough place to minister. It's probably, it, it is almost like going on the mission field when you go in that place. It's very, very uh, their level of income is very much lower than anybody else's. They don't like outsiders. Uh, if you move into that area, you are considered a Q-Town person, and here's how you need to think and do. They have their own mayor and stuff, but they are very inwardly focused. Like, they don't like people coming in from the outside. So it was we had that, we actually, when we planted the church there in Quantico, we actually got somebody to move in there. That's the only way we could plant a church and get people to come, is by getting people to live in that community and be able to do that. Hmm. So they, they don't go outside the town much to do much. Um, and so by putting a church there, we're able to reach those people and just really do a, a good gospel work. But that was a work where we saw there is no Christian activity going on. There's nothing going on. And so we wanted to go there and start a new work and plant a church. We just, there was a guy, uh, another guy who wanted to plant the church in the area. And so we just went over there and did that. What's your regular attendance at Quantico? 10, 12, about 600. It's been there five years. Mm. It's just, I mean, telling you, it's a really difficult place. So, a lot of, a lot of division there. A lot of people who have their own way of thinking. And I mean, you can imagine that even if you get uh, new believers and stuff like that, they're just really hard, and they're kind of, you know, mm. it's not ex-military guys. It's just people who get cheap. Uh, it's pretty cheap housing there. So, uh, um, it's mm. a beautiful place. It's really hard. It's fun. You get any support from friends on the base? Uh, some, I mean, um, Q Town and the Q Town and Quantico separate themselves so much. They try to stay separate, 
Now there are obviously are some stuff that in, in Q Town that's beneficial, like the barber shops and things like that that they have. It's beneficial to the Marines, but there's uh, unfortunately we haven't been able to close that gap yet of Marine activity there. And so what we're hoping to do is right now we meet the community center in Q Town. What we're hoping to do is eventually get into the um, if we can raise enough support, we, we'll get into the, one of those uh, building fronts so we can actually have a business there or something like that. We can fund Marines. Because our, our goal is, is to send, is to train up, or is to, to, to witness to these guys, train them up in the gospel, and then send them out wherever they go. You know, these guys are in training school, most of them, for a very short time, eight months to a year, uh, if that long. And so we want to be able to send them back out with their have the mentality of, oh, let's spread the gospel, let's plant the churches, and hmm. things like that. So we, pretty much everything we do, we have a mission mindset about how we want to do it. So it may not always be happening the way we want it to, but. Now, how long you been uh, been up here? You said nine years. Uh, we've been here. Okay, it was eight years. Eight years. Yes. With uh, we, 2006, we were we were passed through Quantico and we attended at Stafford Baptist. So this is a okay. this is a change. Could you tell us where the the hidden history of the vision is? Uh, where this whole uh, church planting came from? That's great. All right. Uh, basically, the church planting came from um, uh, Stafford Baptist has. They have not planted any new churches, and they've been. They, I think they were they were originated in 1974 or five, something like that, and never planted any new churches. And the pastor Bill Jessup got hired. Uh, I think he's been there 10 years now. He wanted to kind of change that. He wanted to put them into a church planting mentality. So when they um, they hired a guy from Liberty University, his name's Clint Clifton, and uh, they brought him in as worship pastor. Well, when he initially came on, it was in the mindset that he would eventually go out and plant a new church. And and so that's kind of where the church planting got started. So Stafford Baptist planted that new church, and uh, with Clint and Dumfries, that's the one that we went to. It's my co church from Dumfries, and that's kind of the one that we went. So that's kind of where the church planting history came from. And so and then Clint has a real passion. We've never, uh, we grew up in North Carolina, very traditional church, uh, very small rural church. N didn't even know what church planting was until we, um, so they came before the church and said they were looking for people to go, people to join us in this new church plant. It's like. And so it was kind of like, so we got involved, and our hearts, you know, fell in love with what we were doing as far as the, being able to go out and, uh, you know, usually you hear people say it on the front lines, but it is really on the front lines of ministry um, because you got to put yourself out there so much and um, really got to, to get a new church started. Obviously, it takes a lot of work. You don't have a building for people to come to, and so you got to actually go out and get the people and evangelize a lot, do a lot of pastor presentations, things like that. So. It's on the front of ministry, so we actually love that. We love that opportunity to be able to knock on doors and share with people what we're doing. And so that's kind of where the church planning mentality came from, and then just training up different people 